Hi. Hello, and welcome back to day 23 of your daily live stream. Today we are talking about money, money, money. And our host of money, money, money is the big boy. Hey, money, your money. Little money, pay some bills, yo, we neck and neck. Steady plan and steady trying to make it better for the fam. So one day we can chill. Riding cattle oh, like boy. Field, so there was that. Thank you, y'all. Welcome back to our daily live stream, day 23. It's spring break at our house. I'm supposed to be on a fishing charter in Tampa Bay right now. But where am I? I'm with you, baby. Day 23 is we try to recession proof your finances in 30 days. I'm Peter Dunn, CEO of Hey Money and Your Money Line. I'm a USA Today columnist. I'm a writer. I do radio and live streams on the internet. So things are going well for me. Uh, so look, uh, we have a few updates for you before we get started. Here's the major one. Mrs. Planner came to me today and she said, Peter, sweetie baby. She doesn't talk like that, but she was like, hey, Easter's on Sunday. So you probably should not have a live streaming show on Easter. And I said, oh, good call. So no show on Sunday. So that means we're extending through Wednesday of next week to get in our 30 days. So glad you're here with me right now, though. A few things to talk about in the market today. The market continues to rise. It is investment week here on the daily live stream. So I will make sure that you understand what you need to know uh, about the market at all times. And that is a big uh, part of what we're hitting here today. Um, also, I'm just trying to think of what, what sort of the current updates going on right now. It looks like Congress is going to approve more paycheck protection program money, uh, potentially another quarter trillion dollars to small businesses to keep the 60,000, uh, 60 million, I should say, employees of small businesses employed, which is a really important thing. The point of our stream here today, as always, every day, is to help you cut at least $500 a month of spending from your budget. Most of that is done at this point in the program. If you've missed the first 22 days, what have you been doing? Just hanging out in a pandemic? Uh, go back, go to uh, callheymoney.com. That is callheymoney.com. And you can uh, go to the blog there and you can catch the first 22 days. Another part of what we're trying to do is to press reset on our finances. A lot of times we feel like our financial lives are put upon us, like we didn't choose them, but guess what? We did. And so this is a great opportunity to rebuild from the start. And of course, we want you to stop guessing. A lot of financial problems come when people just start guessing that things work the way they think they work and they don't. There are numbers involved and today is going to be a good lesson in that. Brief moment of pause though, before we get started. Um, over the last couple of days, I've heard from a lot of people around the country and a lot of different industries, with a lot of different income levels, and we're continuing to see a pretty aggressive pace of furloughs and layoffs. Again, I tell you this not to scare you, not to make you sad, not to salt any wounds. But when you get distracted by things like the stock market, which is continues to go up right now over the last few days, it's and when you hear the slowing of the virus numbers, which we've sort of seen over the last couple of days, you can get very distracted away from what the long term impact of this is going to be besides loss of life. I'm not downplaying that, but this is an economic show then you can't get distracted by the fact that the economy is in, is in pretty big trouble here. Uh, I'm going to keep studying it for you, trying to keep breaking it down for you on a daily basis. But uh, before we do that, just know that you can always get in contact with my team, callhaymoney.com. You can uh, go there and you can get paired up with a financial expert who will guide you through your financial life. It only costs you $17.99 a month if you use offer code cheese. What's so strange about this, people don't get it. They are like, well, well, what am I paying for? You're paying for an expert to look at your finances and tell you what to do and guide you down the right way, answer questions, solve problems. We all have problems right now. Uh, so just give us a call uh, and do that by going to callheymoney.com. You'll be paired with your person and they will help you. Okay. So the market fell from its high point in February, 37%. Okay, so the market was at an all-time high in February of 2020, pandemic hits, economy starts to contract, the market flies down 37%. People are freaking out uh, before it starts to go down, as it starts to go down, and when it's down. It has since recovered over 20% off the low. 
So that is to suggest people who freaked out and sold and said, I don't want to lose this cash have already lost money. And that's the tough part about this is what you have to prevent yourself from doing at any point in time is trying to time the market to try to say, you know, I think it's going to go down. So I'm going to get out of this. I know that seems like it makes sense. But if you are a buy and hold investor and you have a, a diversified portfolio, getting in and out of the market makes absolutely no sense. And my goal today is to prove that to you before we get there, though. There is part of the CARES Act, which is the stimulus plan, that allows you to withdraw penalty free up to $100,000 of retirement money uh, to be used to get you through this hard time. I'm going to write about this tomorrow morning on my Twitter feed, on uh, the Wednesday morning update. Just so you know, I think that is the absolute last thing you want to do. If you've got no other cards to play and, and you're out of moves, sure, borrow some money against your retirement plan, withdraw some money from your retirement plan and take care of business. But I, I mean, if you're getting unemployment benefits, if you can go into debt a little bit, I would rather you do that than pull money out of your retirement account because it will compromise your future. On top of that, you still will owe taxes on the money. They may not withhold the 20%, uh, which is standard right now in taxes, but you will owe taxes over the next three years on that money. Don't make the mid and long term worse by trying to solve short term problems with long term solutions. Using your retirement account to get you out of a jam right now is the absolute last thing you want to do. And let's begin to understand why. So I hit my man Damien, one of my coworkers up on uh, Slack this morning. I said, My brother, he's not my brother, but we have the same last name and we kind of look alike, but he's probably better looking. Anyway, I, uh, now that I just, did I say that about my coworker? I'm going to fill out a form. I don't know how this works. Anyway, I said, Hey, can you send me some charts? Just to, you know, the charts that you and I deal with on a regular basis. So he sends me charts. They're really good charts. I put them up to, to test the graphics here today. And they the print is so small. You couldn't read it. So I had to go find some other charts. So today's charts are provided by not Damien on my team. Fidelity, right? Fidelity investments, one of the largest investment companies in the world. I, uh, I borrowed these charts from them here today and I appreciate their efforts because it is helping me help you understand how the markets work. So go to Fidelity for investing needs. This is not a paid endorsement. I just feel bad that I borrowed their charts. So let's start to take a look. Okay, a lot going on here. You need to understand how you need to understand how markets recover when they recover. When bad things happen, the market doesn't just end end itself forever. Right? But sometimes it feels that way. There's so much pain going on right now. You have to make sure you understand that the pain is not forever. It is truly temporary, especially from an investment standpoint. So what I would like to do on this first chart from Fidelity, that's fidelity.com. I want to show you some bad days that you and I have experienced together and what happens after that. So let's go back to the beginning of the chart, go to the far left side, you know, the access of the chart down there, 1985. This, we're taking a look at the S&P 500, which is an index that measures the health and performance of the stock market at large. You can see around 1987, that first tick on there. Come on, get a, I can't get a pointer. Oh, boy. Black Monday. Black Monday was in uh, uh, the fall of 20, or 1987. It's a terrible day in the stock market. One of the, a record bad day in the stock market until, well, this March. And yet, the market persisted. The Persian Gulf War was not too far after that in the early 90s, yet the market persisted. The Asian financial crisis, which some of us remember in the uh, mid to late 90s. And then you get to the dot-com bubble burst. This was right when I was in college. I was day trading and uh, fortunately, I didn't get whipped out too bad right there. Then you move on to September 11th. Do you remember how things felt there? You remember? It was not great. Uh, and the market was scary as well. Let's jump ahead to the global financial crisis, the green bubble there around 2008, 2009. And it dipped all the way down the S&P 500 right around 2010. And it has been on a steady climb since then. That is called a bull market. When the market goes, trends up over time, it is called a bull market. When it trends down over time, it is called a bear market. So let's take a look again. There was a miniature bear market from 2000 to 2005, okay? 
2003-2004. Then uh, it climbed up in a little bit of a bull market from 2004 all the way up to 2008. And then the bear market began 2008-2009. And we've been in a bull market since then. We dealt with the fiscal cliff, if you remember that. That was a little bit of a nightmare. We've dealt with Brexit appropriately. And now we're dealing with coronavirus. What is likely to happen is the market will continue to be volatile over the next coming months, maybe a year. But it will continue on its trend up as the economy continues to grow. This is to say, you don't know when it's going to go down. You don't know when it's going to go up which is why it generally makes the most sense to stay in it. Let's take a look at more graphics. Okay, well, look at this. I can, I'm sneaking through the graphic there. Let's see if I can give you a, oh, oh, a thumbs up. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, so what happens the five years after one of these really bad events? All right, so let's look at May of 1932. It's the Great Depression. What happens after the, you know, Let's say the, the low point of these horrible events. What happened the five years after the Great Depression? The S&P 500 went up 367%. 367% in five years. What happened after the severe recession that was in the early 1980s? The market went up 267%. What happened in December of 1994 when the Federal Reserve um, started messing with interest rates, and it was some of the most aggressive tightening in the past 20 years, the market went up 251% the five years after that. And how about after the Great Recession, which was 2008, 2009? The five years, I believe starting on March 9th, which was the low point, March 9th of 2009, it went up 178% in five years all right so speaking of let me go here first and we'll go back to it we keep talking about how you don't want to try to time it you don't want to say okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna sell now let it dive a little bit and then jump back in remember the chart we looked at yesterday with emotions and how uh, we tend to make mistakes uh when we're when we're you know not paying attention well what ends up happening is if you try to get cute and you try to get out of the market at certain times, you are going to miss the best days because the best days on the chart you just saw often follow the worst days. And that was no more evident than last week when we had, or last, who even knows, last week or two weeks ago, we had one of the biggest point drops in history, if not the biggest point drop, followed by the biggest point gain in history. So if you would have freaked out and sold at 3.59 p.m. Eastern time on the day of the worst drop, you would have lost and missed the biggest point gain in history and here's the impact let's here's how this chart works so let's say you invested ten thousand dollars on january 1st of 1980 that's sort of a standard financial industry thing they always got people investing 10 grand all my financial advisor friends are like yep yeah, there's the old 10 grand anyway you put 10 grand in the s p 500 index january 1st of 1980 and let's say you were invested every single day until December 31st of 2018. Once again, this chart is from Fidelity Investments. You would have $659,515 if, if you stayed invested every single day from January 1st of 1980 to December 31st of 2018. You didn't have to do anything except just ignore your money. You didn't have to even open your statement. You would have started with 10 grand and you would have ended with just under $700,000. Now, let's say you get cute. And let's say at some point in time, you're like, oh, I'm getting nervous. I got to get out. And you never learn your lesson. And you always pull out the wrong time, which everyone always does. And you just missed five days in the market. Now, you weren't invested all the days, but you were invested all the days but five days. But they happen to be the five most important days. You would have lost, theoretically, or you would have not gained, $233,000, which is 35% less by just missing five days in the market. Now, what if you miss 10 days? What if you're that unlucky that you're like, oh, I don't know. It, it, I'll tell you when this is all said and done in the last two weeks, if you missed a couple, two, three days in the last couple of weeks, 
you will have missed some of the best days in the history of the market. If you miss 10 days, you have $318,000 instead of 659. If you miss 30 days, which is just a month, I did the math for you, you'd only have $125,000. And if you miss the best 50 days over this entire time frame, which is a pretty immense time frame, you would have lost 91% as opposed to just leaving it the heck alone. You only have $57,000. Now, don't get me wrong. I would like to have $57,000 if I only invested $10,000 but not in comparison to having $659,515. You guys, what we're going through right now is it's awful. I'm losing sleep. You're losing sleep. We're sad for our friends and our parents and our kids and our neighbors, our coworkers, our leaders. We feel bad for everyone. It's hard. It is. And so we are experiencing major short-term discomfort. I, I get it. But please learn from these types of things. You will extend the pain if you mess with your investments right now. You will. Try not to tap them for emergency reserves. Don't withdraw the free $100,000 from your investments. And by free, I mean it's not free. It's your money. You have to pay taxes. Don't do that right now. Because then you're pulling money out at lows, at market lows, paying taxes on it, even though you don't have penalty. And so even if you put the money back in, you are going to miss the rise again. So please don't do that. Tomorrow, as promised, we're talking about time horizon. We're talking about diversification. We're talking about asset allocation. The day after that, which is Thursday, we are doing Broken 50. If you are 50 years old-ish on either side of that, and you don't have any money, things are not going well. That entire episode on Thursday will be dedicated to show you exactly how to still retire some 17 years later. Seems impossible. Because think about this. We tell people who are 22 years old to start saving now so you can retire successfully. I mean, what's what we're telling 22-year-olds? I tell 22-year-olds that out every day. Not that I hang out with 22-year-olds. They think I'm an old guy. But that's what I tell them when I see them. Yeah, I'm telling you if you're 50 and you've had to start over three or four times or You've just got beaten up. You don't have a job right now. I will tell you on Thursday, if you're 50, I will show you a reasonable way to still have a retirement. I don't know if we talked about it on this show, and we will talk about it on Thursday, but the hardest years of your financial life are ages 47 to 53. I don't know if you knew this. We did a study. We know this. Hardest years of your life are ages 47 to 53. So much going on, so many obligations. They're so intense. The stakes are so high. So if you're 47 to 53 right, right, right now and you're going through what we're all going through, it is actually harder on you. I read all these articles like, this is the second big crisis for millennials. Okay, well, I'm sorry. It's like the fourth or fifth big crisis for people my age and a little bit older. And if you're 47 to 53, you've been through a lot of crises and the stakes are now higher because you have fewer years left in your career than you've already worked. That's a problem. Oh, by the way, your parents are aging, financially aging, you're aging, you're, you, you know, the health that comes with that. Your kids have student loans. You may have student loans on their behalf. They may be living with you now. You don't get stimulus checks for them, right? I mean, there's a lot going. We'll hit that on Thursday. All right. If you need help between now and then, call heymoney.com. Actually go there, kick around the blog a little bit, re revisit the best moments of the last 22 days. I don't even know what that means. Okay, everybody. I'm I'm taking the rest of the day off. I really am. It's spring break. And so my wife gave me a list of chores and I'm going to go complete them. I think I have to clean off the porch so we can eat dinner on the porch tonight because it's all my kids have been asking to do since it was January and it's 70 degrees today. All right. We're going to get through this. As I tell you every single day, it will get hard. Er, yeah, that's the thing. It's hard now. It's going to get worse. But you know that now. So you can get prepared. It's going to get worse. Don't get lulled into comfort with the virus numbers or the market because the economy is going to get worse. Okay, don't freak out. That's why we're doing this. I will see you tomorrow. Same place. We're talking uh, time horizon, risk tolerance, diversification. That's what we're doing tomorrow. I'll see you then. I'm Pete the Platter, and this is the show.